Hi everyone, welcome back to another video of my PTE workshop. My name is Romnik and I will be discussing one of the most frequently asked questions with you in this video. And that question is, is there negative marking in the PTE exam? Well, the answer is yes and no, because there are two exercises and I will be discussing both of them today and will also give you tips and advices on how you can avoid those negative marks. Well, coming back, there are two exercises wherein there is negative marking indeed and where a lot of students tend to lose marks just because they did not know or they weren't aware of the fact that there is negative marking. So without much ado, I'll start with the first exercise. And the first exercise is, it's pretty much the easiest exercise I'd say in the PTE exam. All you need to do is listen carefully and pay attention and that's about it. That's all you need to do. That is highlight the incorrect words. So what happens in this exercise is you will listen to a recording that will be being, that will be played, sorry, in the background. And as you're listening, you'll also have to read a paragraph that's in front of you. And as you're reading that paragraph, some words from the recording will be different from the words in the paragraph. And all you need to do is you need to highlight or in the examination, just click on the word that is incorrect. And in this exercise, what I'll do in fact is before I give you tips or any advices, we'll do one example together and I'll see how you all go. I'll give you enough time to like, you know, come up with the right answers and then tell me how you all go. And after that, I'll give you a tip or give you the advice for this exercise and how to get the maximum marks and minimum mistakes. And then we'll do another example and see how you go again. Sounds good? Let's do it. So now in front of you, you can see is a paragraph that starts with if you're like me and then ends with Uptown Express. One thing you need to keep in mind is that if the word, for example, it's your, if you're like me, it's not if you are like me, but in the recording, if they say, if you are like me, you have to click on the word. It is an incorrect word in that case, but I don't know what this recording is. It could be your or you are, but just to give you an outline, just to give you an example that this is how you need to look after the words and that could actually be a wrong word. And you might have to click on that word if that word turns out to be you are indeed. So what I'll do is I'll play the recording now and we'll see how we all go. If you're like me, somewhere in your closet or maybe in a drawer, you probably have a pair of pants you hope to someday fit into again. But staying on a diet and finding time to exercise, it's no walk in the park. But wait. Before you swear off the spaghetti, scientists at the State University of New York in Stony Brook have stumbled onto a new way to slenderize. They found that mice that spend 15 minutes a day standing on a vibrating platform are leaner than mice who just stand still. Their results appear in the current online edition of the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. All the animals in the experiment were allowed to eat their fill. After 15 weeks, the shaken mice didn't actually weigh any less, but compared to the mice who hung out on a stationary platform, they had about 30% less fat around their middles. The Sunni scientists think that the jiggling kept fat cells from forming. Whether it would do the same for people, you never know. And here you thought New Yorkers were lean and mean because they're always in a hurry rushing here and there. Maybe it's because they spend so much time standing on vibrating subway platforms, waiting for the Uptown Express. All right, so how many did you get wrong? Well, if you got five wrong or seven wrong, then that's incorrect. The number of incorrect words in this is six. And how this works is, so let's say you got six incorrect words and all six indeed were the correct answers or the correct incorrect words, you get a six on six. But if you chose maybe seven incorrect words and maybe six of them are right, but one of them was a wrong, was actually a correct word that you thought is wrong and you highlighted that word, you lose one mark. So you get a five on six. Similarly, if you maybe chose eight words, but only six were correct, so you get a four, you lose two marks for those two innocent words that you chose or like, you know, you thought to be incorrect. So one very commonly asked question in this exercise is, for example, if there are maybe three correct answers and you only were able to choose one, then you only get marks for one and not for three. However, if there are three correct answers, you choose one correct and two incorrect. Not only do you lose marks for the one correct answer that he gave, but you also get a minus one overall. You get a minus one out of three because you also chose one more incorrect word. So keep that in mind. This exercise can be the easiest, although it can be the one where you lose the most marks if you don't pay attention or if you're not focused. So if you're not 100% sure about a word, Instead of just clicking on it and taking a risk, just leave it. Don't click on anything. Don't take any risks because you don't want to mess up marks for the marks that he gained by, you know, 
listening and paying attention to the other words or choosing the other incorrect words so just don't let that happen to you now as easy as this exercise might sound a lot of people make mistakes and believe me a lot of people neglect practicing this exercise and they're like you know what it's the easiest exercise ever you just have to listen and see and that's about it you can't lose marks but what happens is a lot of people tend to stumble when they're reading the passage and one word they're not sure about it whether it's incorrect or not and they just keep looking at it and in return they miss out on the other words the, there could be like two or three consecutive words but if you're just focused on one word you're not paying attention to the rest of the words and you lose marks then and there because you end up not clicking them and that way you miss out on two or three other words so my best tip my best advice is on the day of the exam when you have this exercise in front of you on the computer screen obviously I want you, you will be provided with a marker or rather in this case in this exercise you will have the cursor of the mouse that you're using what I want you to do is before the recording starts you have a few seconds pick up the cursor of the mouse and point it to the first word which in this case is if now as the recording is being played and as the person starts speaking from if you're like me that's when it starts scrolling your recording or like rather sorry scrolling your cursor along with the words as soon as you come across a word that's different from the word that's being heard just click on it if you click on it once even if you accidentally click on a word that's fine don't worry about it if you click on it again the highlight will be removed but what I want you to do is once you're reading it just keep the flow constant move along each word the speech it can be too fast but most of the times it's like normal speech that we just heard it's at a normal rate and you don't have to worry about it being too fast or too slow if it's too slow it's even better but you don't have to worry about it being too fast if you just follow the strategy and focus your ears should be like in a completely focused and your eyes should be on the screen and your hand on the mouse three things that's all you need even if english is not your first second third fourth language you can still easily crack this exercise because you just have to make sure that what you're listening is the same as what's written and that can only happen if you're focused and if your hands moving according to the recording and now before i start doing that I'm giving you a few seconds just to make sure that your mouse is on the word I so that as soon as I play the recording you can you move your mouse along and since you're watching this video and it's on YouTube you if you click on it it's obviously going to pause the video but at least try counting the number of incorrect words if you can't actually remember the exact word that's completely fine so you only have to click on the incorrect word in the exam you don't have to come up with what the correct word is no that's not a part of the task you only have to highlight the incorrect word so even if you forget what you had heard that's completely fine that's completely normal don't stress about it anyway coming back to this exercise now i will be playing the recording make sure your mouse is ready and focused and let's go i once took part in a vodka tasting contest in which participants tried to tell an expensive brand from a cheap one i don't recall the exact outcome for obvious reasons but i do know that several people swore they could taste the difference well maybe they could because according to a study in the journal of agricultural and food chemistry Different vodkas can have different molecular structures, which could drive drinkers to favor one brand over another. Vodka is an alcoholic beverage that's supposed to be relatively flavorless. So researchers got to wondering, how come people who enjoy this stuff often express brand preference? Being good little scientists, they trotted out their spectroscopic equipment and examined the chemical signatures of five different vodkas. What they found is that each brand differs in how its ethanol molecules cluster. In the ethanol water mix we call vodka, some of the ethanol molecules get surrounded by a sort of cage made of water. And different brands differ in how much ethanol is caged. Vodkas with fewer cages might seem more watery than those with more structure. And of course, drink enough of the stuff, and it really won't matter how tightly caged it is. You'll be loose as a gray goose. All right, so how did you go with this exercise? Like I said, because it's on the computer screen and you can't really click on the incorrect word, I don't expect you to like, you know, remember the words, but at least how many of them. So the correct answer in this case is five, five words. And uh, if you were able to use the strategy of mine that I recommended and move your cursor along, there's no way you got this wrong. And again, if you did get this wrong, that's completely fine. It's normal if it's your first time or not, because this only gets better with practice, with more and more listening. And again, this is one of those only few exercises in the PT examination, which are oriented to only one subsection, and that's only listening. So there's no reading, writing, or any speaking involved in this, and you get marks for listening and listening only.
Okay, so having done with the highlight the incorrect word exercise, let's jump on to the next, the second exercise where it's very convenient. Rather, the only exercise, the only second exercise where it's possible to get a negative mark in the PTE exam. And that is the multiple choice questions with multiple answers. Okay, now as you'd expect, if you've given any multiple choice question, exam in the past wherein like you know you choose multiple answers for a single question you might be aware of this rule that you get marks only for the correct answers if for example a question has five or six options such as the example in front of you and let's say only two of these answers are correct but you end up choosing three which means you choose two correct and one incorrect option then that one incorrect actually cancels off the grade for one correct answer and you end up getting one out of two however if the correct answer if there are five options again and if you choose two correct answers and two incorrect answers you end up getting a zero and for example if you choose three answers one correct and two incorrect not only do you get a zero but you also get a negative one mark for the incorrect answer that you chose because the number of incorrect answers outweigh the number of correct answers and that is something you really should avoid in the examination well now that you're here i will be giving you tips and i will be solving a couple of examples with you and we'll see how we can actually avoid this mistake let's do one example together in fact let's do two examples together the first example i'll be sharing this question with you and i want you to attempt this question as if it's your first time so you have no tips no advice no strategies to answer this question but just do it from your own experience how you normally would have done it had you not seen this video so i'll give you 90 seconds for this one if you feel you need some more time you can easily pause this video and do it according to your own comfort since it's your first attempt that's completely fine but the question is uh, about a host ride in southern africa and you can see seven options all the way from a to g so all you know is that two or more of these options are correct so one small tip that i want to give you is obviously read the question first so the question is according to the text which of the following behaviors are expected of a new host ride you obviously want to read the question first and that makes not only reading the paragraph a lot easier but also reading the paragraph a lot more relatable because now you know what you're looking for and if you know what you're looking for, reading the paragraph becomes more interesting. Reading the paragraph becomes, you're able to grasp more information, more useful information, and in a way, easily neglect everything that's not related to the question and something that should not be understood. But well, I want you to do this example on your own. And you have 90 seconds as discussed, which start now. All right, so how did you go with this one? Well, let's discuss the answers. So the first one is she is not allowed to drink milk from her father's cows. Okay, so in this paragraph, from what I can see, in this passage rather, from what I can see, if you look at the second paragraph, it does say that she's not being allowed to drink milk from her homestead herd. But here they're talking about the in-laws. But in the question, sorry, in the option, it says father's cows, not the father-in-law's cows. So which means that's the incorrect answer. That's not the correct option that we're looking for. The second one is she cannot use name of any of her husband's male relatives. But that is, is that correct or not? I do not think that's correct because it says it's only for the senior relatives, not the junior relatives. So if it was a younger cousin or a younger uncle or whoever it is, but someone that's related to the husband, but younger in age, she can call them by name or junior relatives can be referred to by their names, their first names, but it's only the senior relatives where this avoidance should be made. All right, the third option now. At her wedding, she is meant to appear unwilling. Is this correct? Is this incorrect? That is correct. If you look at the very first paragraph, it says that any signs of joy are considered inappropriate and she needs to, she needs to show both reluctance and sadness. 
and reluctance in a way is a close word, a close synonym of the word unwilling. So if you balance them both out, this does make sense. So I would choose this as one of the answers. The fourth point, she is not allowed to enter her new home by the front entrance. Well, in the second paragraph, it does say that if she wishes to go from home, from house to house, she must take the back way. But it does not say anything about her coming back to her own home or her own house. So these are the small things that you need to read, read between the lines, that what's been asked and what's been given. So had the question been that she ha she's not allowed to go from one home to another from the back door, that would have been the correct option. But it, here it's her own home, her own new home rather. So which is why this is not the option that we're looking for. So we will leave D out of the picture. Now option E, she must wear a headscarf when meeting her husband's relatives. All right, so if we come back to the second paragraph in the second half, second, second last line, we can see it says that handkerchief low over the forehead, never showing a bare head to her husband's relatives. There, it's pretty much given away. So E is again one of the options that we're looking for. Well, let's go to option F. She is not allowed to touch plates in the family home. Well, about that, in the second paragraph, the last line says that she is not allowed to touch any of the drinking utensils. But eating, touching plates does not say anything about touching plates or utensils you use for eating food. So which is why the option F is incorrect as well and not the option that we're looking for. Lastly, option G, she must avoid using names of some of her husband's female relatives. Yes, if you go to the second paragraph, the line furthermore, she is not allowed to use any personal names of her mother-in-law nor those of her husband's aunts and elder sisters, which are indeed the husband's close female relatives. So if you look at this, there are three answers that we're looking for. The three options that are the correct options are C, E, and G. And even though all the other options have remotely been mentioned in the passage, they're not entirely correct. Some of the details have been mixed up or played around with and like in a way to try to convince you that that's the correct answer, but it's not. So you need to read between the lines and you need to be alert. And one thing that a lot of students again do is when they're not sure about an option, for example, the option, maybe the option C or the option E, let's just take the option C. A lot of students might think that, you know what, the option C does not make sense because unwilling is completely different. There's nothing about unwilling that's been mentioned in the passage, but it's only reluctance and sadness or signs of joy are inappropriate. This is the only information that's been given in the paragraph. So does this even make sense? Should this even be the right answer or not? And they tend to spend maybe like 60, 70, 80 seconds on just one single option and then they end up not even choosing it or they end up choosing it and that's not the correct answer. And so what happens in this case, not only have you wasted the time that you could have used in the other reading exercises, but you've also chosen the wrong answer that is not gonna contribute. And in a way, reversely, adversely contribute to your marks and take away the marks that you very much deserve from the other options that you've chosen. And instead of getting a three on three, you only got two correct, but instead of getting those two out of three, you're only getting a one on three because you've chosen an incorrect answer. So always refrain from choosing an answer or choosing an option if you're not sure about it. You can choose fewer options, that's fine. Even if it's a multiple choice, multiple answer, even if you end up choosing just one option, that's fine. You're not gonna get full marks, but you'll get, you at least won't lose marks for choosing one correct and one wrong. So please bear that in mind and don't waste time on a question. So now one thing you need to know before you attempt this exercise and not just multiple choice, multiple answers, but even multiple choice, single answer questions is that there are basically four major types of questions that can come in the examination. And for example, one question could be, what is the opinion of the author from the passage above? And when you read the paragraph, you before that you read the question, obviously, and then you go on to read the paragraph of the passage and back in your head, you already know in the back of your mind that you know, you're looking for the opinion of the author, you're not looking for anything else. And that makes solving the question or getting the answer a lot easier. Another one could be, what is the main idea or the overall purpose of the passage? Again, once you read it, you know what you're looking for. What's the main idea? The main idea generally lies in the first two lines and the last two lines of the passage. So if you get a question asking the main idea or the overall purpose, pray, I'm sorry, pay that extra emphasis to the first couple of lines and the last couple of lines because usually the answer lies there. The third one is, according to the text, what is different between A and B? Or how does A differ from B? So, you know, the question could be about maybe something 
that compares two different things could be like you know public transport being compared to private vehicles and then the question could be accordingly that you know what's the advantage or what's the difference between a public transport and private vehicle or whatsoever this is a very vague example and a very easy one you'll be lucky if you get a question like this but questions can be a bit harder or trickier but they can be made easy with the right strategies and tips and advices now the fourth one the fourth kind is which of the following statements is correct or which of the following statements is incorrect now obviously if you're doing a multiple choice multiple answer there'd be more than one statement that's correct which is very relevant to the example that we just did wherein it says that which of the following behaviors are expected of a new zosa bride or a new hosa bride i always say it wrong of a new hosa bride and you need to know that you know you're looking for what are the correct behaviors expected or what are the correct points from with regards to what you read in the passage above so that's the kind of questions these are the kind of questions rather that you can expect in the examination and they become a lot easier to attempt once you know what you're looking for and you'll only know what you're looking for if you read the question first beforehand reading is one of those sections in the examination wherein you are required to make your own time plan you will have a time limit on top but that time limit is for the entire reading section could be anywhere between 45 to 75 minutes depending on the number of reading questions asked all you'll see is this the remaining time and the number of questions in reading remaining and accordingly you have to frame or like you know you have to come up with a time plan but well the good news is there're only two or a maximum of three multiple choice multiple answer questions so you don't have to stress about these too much If you can get them right amazing only go with the options that you're absolutely confident about if you're doubtful about any option just leave it go into the next exercise and so that you don't end up losing marks in this one where you easily can avoid doing so if you just don't answer if you just don't put in an attempt and only put in an attempt if you're 100% sure that's all they want from you so now that we've heard all the valuable information let's do another example in this paragraph it starts with x-ray crystallography and the last few words are determined every year and what's the question what's what's being asked of the paragraph right so did you read the question great now that you've read the question you have 90 seconds to solve this answer and come up with the right options and your time starts now All right so I'm hoping you've all done the answers and if you look at the question it's which of the following factors are consistent with the theory of x-ray crystallography and the four questions the four preempt options that I gave you before this exercise this suits the fourth question or the fourth option that is which of the following statements is correct or incorrect so if you keep that in mind and if you read the question then reading the paragraph becomes a lot easier here the correct answer is indeed b and the option d The options X rays are scattered according to the atomic structure of the crystal lattice, and D, the process can be used to determine the chemical structure of biological compounds. Now, obviously, if you've been able to read this passage carefully, if you did take the time, if you were not able to do it in the ninety seconds, that's fine. Even if you could pause it and do it all the way, that's correct. But if not, you sincerely need a lot of practice. But again, don't be disheartened. don't like give up too easily because this is easily one of the harder exercises in the examination and it's very easy to become confused and it's very easy to get lost within the options because you don't know which one's correct you don't know how many are correct and it can be a pain but like i said you only get two or three of these exercises in the examination and they can easily be covered they can easily be cleared with the right amount of practice with the right amount of training 
and by doing as many tests or sample questions as you can. And well, with that, we covered two exercises today, the only two exercises when there is negative marking involved in the examination. And we also did a few examples, two examples each to be exact. And uh, I hope you find this a lot easier than you initially did. And if you got them all four correct, excellent. If not, don't be disheartened. It's only going to go upwards from here. And because these were considerably difficult examples that I just pulled out in front of you to give you an out, uh, overview of the exercises and to show you how it can be done. So again, wish you all the luck and make the most out of it and don't give up.